Why take just a couple of acres when we could be spending money on large tracts of land? Um, so we came up with a variety of answers for this. We can preserve local biodiversity. We can provide corridors for native populations. So if we have two large expanses of prairie, but they're divided by the city's pieces, if we plant pocket prairies in Houston, we can help to connect some of the populations of uh, native species. Uh, and we can also safeguard ecosystems. So at Rice University, we're pretty lucky in that we have two other established and maintained pocket prairies right in our neighborhood. There's one in Cumming Park and then one at the end of the other school cluster center. And so what our project is doing is to compare the biodiversity between these two established prairies and then also looking at what biodiversity is already there at our um, share a prairie site at, on campus. Um, so to do these biodiversity surveys, we used Google Earth to overlay grids on top of each of the three pocket prairies. And um, we were hoping to um, survey a 30% of the area of each prairie um, to get a representative sample of which kind of forms the grasses were there. So once we had the grid, we randomly selected quadrants on the grid, and then within each of these quadrants, we used one by one meter quadrats pictured here to look at what species were inside these quadrats and also get an estimate of what the percent coverage of each species was. Um, and in addition to the forbs and grasses, we were also observing woody plants in the sites and also insects that we saw um, a crucial component of what our methodology was, was to use the iNaturals app as um, our biodiversity catalog. So since most of us have smartphones, we were able to use this technology to keep a real-time catalog with photos and important information such as the percent coverage and the GPS coordinates of where all of these observations were taking place. Another great thing about having iNaturalists, all of our observations on iNaturalists, was that we had access to community experts who were able to identify some of the prairie species for us because we're, we certainly don't know all of the prairie species ourselves. Um, so now that we've had this brief 
overview of what our methodology is, we're going to talk about each of the three sites in depth. So the first site that we're going to is the MBA So our methodology is going to look similar to the other sites. We're going to superimpose the script from Google Earth and then sample um, from the four different continents. And so here, again, we were looking at 30% um, area of coverage. And then in addition, we surveyed the entire site for pollinators and their different wind plants, which we're going to upload into our model to sort of get a better picture for this. And so here are sort of the species that we have um, in just our four very broad categories. And so again, This project was uh, largely a volunteer effort. Um, if you like, look it up online. You can see pictures of like volunteers planting um, the seeds and weeding out invasive species. Um, this area consisted of about two acres. Uh, part of this prairie is actively managed, um, but another part of the prairie is um, not managed. So it's whatever happens to grow there uh, that grows there. Um, here, this the grid. Uh, same methodology. Quadrants, laid down the quadrants, and made the quadrants, laid down the quadrants, and aimed for about 30% coverage. Um, these are the species that we found at Hermes Park. You'll notice that there are a lot more weed species in this area because it is part of the park, and people typically don't like to chop down trees. That's a very nice part of the scenery. And uh, moving on to Mike. Thank you. <clears throat> so, having heard about the maintained and restored pocket prairies near Rice, the next natural question is, so what does that mean? How do we bring that back to rice, and how do we have rice play a role in this urban conservation movement? Well, luckily for rice, we have an area on campus called the Harris Gully Natural Area. It's about three uh, acres of not restored and not maintained land. It kind of holds water after some heavy rain. There's a disc golf course that goes through there, and a sidewalk that'll give you access to the medical center. But other than those things, it's not really serving an active purpose on Rice's campus. However, there is the potential and opportunity for change because the Arboretum Committee at Rice has decided that this whole urban conservation movement, this idea of putting a pocket prairie on our campus in the middle of the city is important enough to have Rice get involved in it. So this is the Google Earth image of the area that we're working with. Uh, most of the naturally restored prairie will be occurring kind of on this side of the sidewalk that you can see here. This area does have a lot of the aspects that we're looking for as well, but there's also some other things going on there at the same time. Um, but So we evaluated that area and this species list that's come out here, you can see some of the species are highlighted in red. This is kind of to emphasize the fact that we're not starting from square one at this natural area that we have. Although it hasn't been restored or actively maintained, the species in red are those that you we have found at the other pocket prairie sites and that we would expect to continue seeing even while the area is restored. So it shows that we have the potential to have a fairly successful pocket prairie on Rice's campus and that we're already on the road there naturally. And so that's a good forecast for the future of what we need to do with the area. And now we're gonna go a little more into the details And so just moving forward with the rice site restoration, um, one thing that we saw in the map over here on this screen is that currently um, this entire area is sort of used as a growing area to feed some species of rice uh, for the medical center. There's also a commercial golf course in this area. And so there are a lot of disturbances and they help bring restoration of this area. So we'll see those disturbances amplify um, for this sort of restoration in the future. And 
so the first thing to know is when the civil um, is labeled as a criminal thing. And this will require illegal entry in the next year's time um, by law and giving you the green light. Uh, for biennial and annual plant use, um, definitely mowing your carpet grass and Bermuda grass, and then also control of uh, your land usage through things like gravity um, and debris, which are pretty prevalent in our site. Um, and then this amendment will also lead to native species introduction, and it actually gives you so much more minimals on the changes that we should um, and also it's implemented into the site along with different native grasses. Um, and then in addition, there's a real need for green usages, which goes into green um, plots for the content, which again will also be so much more important. And so just the longer the more that this is definitely for the good and it's also a major um, correction to my first slide on the first page. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, in addition to looking at the biodiversity of these different we also form into these like educational outreach. And we've heard a lot about educational outreach here today with different presentations. And so we really wanted to add to that. Um, the main educational project that we're working on right now is a video tour of the species at the Rice University site. And we're hoping to show this to Rice students and the general public in order to help bring interest to the site. And I'll show a clip of this in a couple of minutes. Another thing is that we really want restored rice site to act as an outdoor classroom for rice students and the general public and maybe even elementary and middle high school in the area. And so one way that we would like to start doing that is through signage on trails throughout the rice area. And we would like these signs to have information on coastal prairies in general as well as specific information on the rice site. Um, another thing that we are really hoping that our study can promote is the use of iNaturalist as a research tool. We found it very, very useful for our study and we're hoping that researchers and citizen scientists can use it as a tool for looking at biodiversity in local areas. So now we're gonna watch a short preview of the video that's still in the process of being made. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just some aspects of the video to keep in mind. So essentially some of the educational aspects of it. So we've each kind of started looking at some of the species that are in the area and giving you know a little bit of an overview on the video so that people walking through the prairie seeing these fairly common you know plants will be able to know something about it. We know like for example this upright prairie cone flower has been used historically as a medicine by native peoples for you know poison ivy rash or rattlesnake bite. That's just something interesting to know that you wouldn't really think about when you're looking at the flowers to your right or left. And so aspects such as that, such as that, and describing what's really going on in the area so people have a better you know, clue. And with this, we're hoping to draw people to the natural area here so that there is more interest in it and so that rice continues to make it. So that's all we have for you today. We'd like to specifically thank Dr. Johnson for helping lead us throughout this entire process, as well as Hannah Gonzalez David Redinger, Jed Aplaska, Sam C. Smith, and the Rice Arbor Museum Committee for helping support us throughout the campus. Thank you. We'd like to take any questions or comments. I'd like to make two comments and then a, and then a question for you guys. So first of all, I've, I've gotten a chance to work with these folks and they're just wonderful. Uh, my second comment is that uh, night picked up when the video didn't work. Yeah. This happens all the time. <laughs> excellent, excellent. First class. So my question is, um, what role, we're seeing a lot of interest in local universities, U of H uh, Central Campus, U of H Downtown, College of the Mainland. Seems like everybody is, this idea of using um, biodiversity conservation as a measure of sustainability programs, which is mostly been on the built infrastructural side up to this point. All of a sudden everybody wants to look at their campus in a biological diversity conservation standpoint. So have you guys seen in your work this semester anything about that being more of a broad trend nationally or, or other universities kind of taking that, that leadership as well? We haven't communicated very much with other universities yet, although hopefully through educational outreach programs we can include other but 
if they have been from other groups on Life's campus that look into biodiversity, I know that there is a specific website that has documented every single tree on Life's campus and what species it is. There are other groups, there's an urban conservation club at Rice along with an environmental club and a wildlife conservation corp. Um, but I'm not sure exactly how that connects to other groups. Um, you said there's been real questions <coughs> on the bill. solar panels on your campus campus as well as the green power farm. And so Rice is present, um, they've invested in a new energy farm and they have to offset part of the green power, but they've also put solar panels on for a number of different technologies. And so I think that's definitely a national trend and sort of will go very deep in the ways that that actually affects solar power or biodiversity. Will your educational outreach include a call to action for the general public? And if so, what is that call? So I think there's, you know, a lot of, like, as far as education and knowing about the prairie and knowing that we are kind of like sharing this ecosystem with all of the forbs and fauna in the prairie and that this area used to be a coastal prairie, that sort of education will be a call to action in the sense that we don't want to just eliminate and stop out the natural habitats around us. You know, this entire concept of urban pocket prairie they, the real estate in urban areas just by itself is so much more expensive than out in like a rural tract of land. And so there is resistance to this whole idea of spending our conservation money on something that's gonna be you know 20% the size of something else we could buy somewhere else. But at the same time, it's that call to action that while it is you know a different sort of location, it is still important and it's still something that we should be involved in and educated on and know is going on wanted to add too that like um, part of the awareness we're trying to build is that this site at Rice isn't just like an overgrown field which has come as I've heard from a lot of my classmates when I'm like talking about this project so we just wanted to like build awareness on campus of like hey this is valuable land it's not just like the university forgot to mow this <laughs> So we haven't placed our process online yet, but that's definitely something we're gonna look into. And it kind of relates back to the earlier question we had about is this sort of a national trend? And there, you know, a lot of times it sometimes seems like conservation biology turns into conversation biology where you talk about a lot of what's going on without you know doing something actively. And here we've been able to have the conversation about what can happen with that with those three acres on Rice's campus, but now we're actually taking the steps to do it. And so that sort of initiative is definitely something we'd want to detail for other universities so that they can look at their own resources and say, you know, do we have a similar area on our own campus? Maybe yes, maybe no. But if the answer is yes, this could be you know, a process that they could follow. So do you work with the Rice's Community Stewardship to make sure the balance on campus? So you're doing so yet, but we are hoping comments. Uh, first, I would like to invite you to come to the other pocket prairie that's in the Rice campus, and that's in Mandel Park. <laughs> it is much, much smaller. If you put your uh, one by one four measures out there, you're going to cover most of the time. Uh, the second point is I, I 
totally log what you're doing. I've, I've, I've seen that unmode section over there. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to point out something that has been said time and time again throughout this conference is that prairies take a lot of maintenance. So when you build your plan to build that prairie, you need to make sure that you've got some system that's going to keep it going over time because even our tiny little Mandel Park prairie require two days of maintenance. Uh, now, we really maintain it if you simply because a lot of the forms and things that come up that we don't want, we take out. So we, we're taking diversity out of the prairie only to keep it so that it's more educational and pretty <laughs> than, than a true raw prairie. But I certainly invite you to come up and look at it because it's only three blocks, six blocks from where you all go to school. Mm -hmm. And Mike has, um, has a plan to do the restoration and phasing so that it all, so that it all each phase will be slightly more controlled and can be, and be the piece of trial and error. Yeah. Additionally, I think the continuation of this course that we're in right now is going to continue to be included in this Prairie project. And so, you know, subsequent classes doing the same thing are not going to do anything near the same thing we're doing because hopefully they'll be on, you know, the next step of the Prairie restoration area. So Rice has been generous enough to dedicate some of their resources and efforts through the Arboretum Committee to help with this time intensive and very effort intensive process. And then there's also a community at Rice, you know, being educated in this sort of field that is going to want to keep throwing this support behind it as well. Yeah, two questions for you. First off, that conservation conversation thing, do you have, is that yours? Did you make that up? Uh, I, I, probably someone else has said it, but. <laughs> <laughs> it like, Either way, consider it stolen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, my question really is though, you guys are, seem to be a pretty neat uh, sort of, uh, uh, well, when I was a decade or so ago, when I was in, in college and I uh, was on campus and in the, you know, the kind of the wildlife field and clubs and those kind of things, uh, there was always kind of a, a disconnect between the kind of the conservation side and the kind of environmental side. Uh, different kind of folks, uh, uh, different interests, even some different classes and programs. And in that perpetuates on into the professional world way too much in the last couple of generations. Do you guys see that as is still something that's somewhat segregated on campus? Do you guys, uh, are, are you guys all members of say the environmental club as, as well as the conservation uh, you know, efforts and those types of things? So the main unifying factor between us is our degrees in ecology and evolutionary biology. And so we have, we've had our coursework expanding from you know, the ecology and the evolutionary information and then into electives that can incorporate a lot more of conservation biology and that sort of thing. And so whilst like there's varying levels of conservation included in the classes, I would say that I think a lot of the people up here can agree with me, all of my classes in my like e-bio degree have incorporated how conservation fits into whatever we're learning about. Yeah. You know, for example, the elective I took about coral reefs that had a lot to do with how conservation efforts are involved with coral reefs. And then the same thing was with an insect biology class that I took and like what the conservation issues are surrounding insects and that. And so it is very present, I would say, in our education, how we're learning what exists around us and at the same time, how we're supposed to interact with what exists around us. I have felt that there is things like that, but there definitely is, sometimes I can feel a difference between how much I care about the environment and how much, you know, a math major cares. But I think that hopefully some of our education outreach programs can help, make, at least help those students understand why it's important, even if it's not what they really want to focus on. So do you do anything to increase that diversity? Because that's what we're finding in trying to form a prairie group in Fort Worth area is the more diverse people that we can get and not just be the same 
plant nerds that are in all the other groups. <laughs> you know, we've got Nest and Echoes and Native Plant Society and all these things, and if we just focus on them, then we're too small. And, it, and it's too hard to take care of something that big because you're talking about how much work is needed. Well, the math major can dig. <laughs> you know, you just have to convince them in some way that it's important to them. And it goes back to just saying uh, something that seems really important because also if you're bringing in a diverse group of people, once they go out into their lives, hopefully they'll see this somewhat environmental mindset in what they do. And granted, we are at the we're at the early stages of this initiative, but I'm also pretty confident that once people start realizing and it gets publicized that Rice is putting resources into this area, that this previously overgrown area that half the people I've talked to said they would want additional parking in because they don't know what else they'd want to do with it, um, you know, to be able to finally show them, hey, there's a lot of time and money and resources and effort into doing this legitimate project here, that'll kind of like open their eyes to say, oh, this is, you know, this is a possibility that can happen. When people think about a park in the middle of a city or, you know, in this case, a pocket prairie in the middle of a city, you're not thinking about the potential to connect populations of native species on one side of one city to another through the ability for them to like have rest stops in the middle of the road. You know, stuff like that that isn't always on the average person's mind. Once they realize that our school is going for this and that we're like putting effort into it, they, you know, increase their interest a little more. I just have to interject and say something. All, most of the students in the class are these bio track students, but they actually are incredibly diverse. We're actually missing a student today because she has an article. Um, <laughs> this guy right here in the green pants has been on a couple middle school, medical school interviews and missed a couple days of class. That's okay, we gave him more work to do. Uh, we have a gal here who's gonna be teaching school in New York uh, next year. Let's see, we have a, we have a vet. <laughs> we have an English major. <laughs> awesome. And uh, so you're going into perhaps some fire you looking What? Don't tell them what I'm doing. <laughs> mix of different students that have come together. Is it just your, I'm, so. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. Is it just your class or is this a group? This is just my class. So this is, yeah, and they're all from this different backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, this is the class. This is it. <laughs> Minus one. Nobody so doing, so just doing things like this <laughs> on a college campus, it does attract a lot of different students from different walks of life. Um, and I think that's really important getting a, a mixed group. Did they know that you were coming together. into the class? Is this something they decided to do as they had to Oh, there's some suckers that just signed up for this class. Yeah. Oh, that's what they think. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a plan for the next group that comes in to, to be able to take, and surely these guys will be coming back if they're staying in the area to come help and do that. For the most part, I think almost everyone's a senior except for one. So I have about three or four that are not seniors that might be continuing on uh, with participation in the project, yeah. But uh, the hope is that through what they are doing, they're gonna generate enough interest in the student body on campus that students are going to, not, not just a class, it's not class. gonna be a class, it's gonna be students, that this is uh, something that they support, that they wanna see on their campus. And uh, you know, follow through with it with all the various clubs and um, all the, the various outreach projects
second thing is in terms of working with students. Uh, one thing that, that Cape Prairie Conservancy, along with the Fish and Wildlife Services, and joined with start doing, actually we had a pilot already, um, is that we're going to start doing virtual field trips for immunocompromised kids at Texas Children's right across the street and at and the Anderson Cancer Center. One of the sites that we're hoping to use is the Rice Garden. Other kids can't get out of hospital, they go to Surf Radio, as you know. Um, so, you know, there's a, there is a, a built-in population right here in the medical center that, that could use a positive diversion of their prey. So we'll definitely be working that down the field. And we're also, or lastly, um, taking what they're, where, what they're doing, what U of H wants to do to bring part of the Coastal Center on campus and make it a Shasta's Prairie, which is, I'm very excited about that. It's been a long time to get a, a prairie on that campus. Um, and then there's other campuses like HCC, College of the Mainland, U of H C, all one pocket prairies all of a sudden. So we're actually gonna get them together in January to talk about the process of doing that and planning that out. We might actually have a competition where the local university's alumni <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.